Hey everyone, it's Pam and I'm here with my monthly update video letting you know everything that I was up to in the month of September. This is probably going to be a long one. So the big thing that happened in September was Retro World Expo in Hartford, Connecticut, and I was a guest there, my very first time ever being a guest at a convention, although it was the fourth time that I have attended Retro World Expo, and as always, it was a lot of fun. There's a great vendor floor there, as well as arcade and free play machines, consoles, uh, pinball machines, there's some live music sometimes, there's tournaments, and the best part is just the people, getting to see people who I had met previously again, and then meeting some people for the first time. I met a ton of fans, sorry, I have, a, I have trouble with the word fans, it's weird to think of me having fans, but I met a lot of people who expressed interest and sort of gratitude for my channel and said they really liked my videos, which was really nice. Uh, definitely made me feel good to see all the people out there who uh, watch this channel and, you know, get to see them sort of face to face and meet them, which was really neat. Uh, a bunch of people asked for pictures with me. One people, one person even asked me to sign his PlayStation, which was kind of cool, but also I was like, are you sure you want me to write on your stuff? That's Okay, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> but it was really a good time. I also got to hang out with the other guests. Uh, at the table next to me was Game Dave, who I met for the first time last year, and he's a super nice guy. Uh, his friend was also there with him, whose name is also Dave, Game Dave and Film Dave, since he does a lot of sort of video um, editing and like equipment and tips and tricks videos himself. So they were really cool to talk to. I'm glad that they were right beside me. Um, so I was always sort of entertained. Also met a number of other people. Uh, Chris from Classic Gaming Quarterly. Derek from Stop Skeletons was from Fighting was there. Uh, there was a bunch of guests and I'm sure I'm forgetting to list some people, but it was cool to be able to meet and hang out with some of them as well. Now I didn't film any video from the show because I just don't like walking around with a camera, but highlights for me were the pinball machines at the arcade. There was a Jurassic Park pinball machine, which I was very excited to play. I also uh, really enjoyed getting to have my own panel. Uh, the attendance was decent for it. I talked a little bit about the next video review that I'm going to be doing, which is still a secret if you weren't there at the convention or if you're not on my Patreon, but that should be coming out in a couple weeks. So I did that and then did a bit of a Q&A at the end, and I was really happy. A lot of people asked really good questions, so I'm thankful to everyone who came out and asked questions and made me feel good about my first time doing a solo panel. Another highlight was the after party on Saturday night. Uh, the after party is cool. There's sort of all kinds of things to do. There's a drink and draw where you can buy a drink for an artist and get them to do a little sketch for you. There's movies playing in some rooms. There's a DJ playing and dancing in another room. And then there was celebrity press your luck. Uh, every year I've been there, at least for the last three years, a company called Big Bucks Entertainment has been there to host game shows. They do things like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Press Your Luck, and the host of them always does such a great job. He's very entertaining. He really gets all the contestants like comfortable and talking and makes sure that it's fun for everyone watching. So when Lance, one of the organizers of Retro World Expo asked me if I wanted to sit on, sit in and be a contestant on this game of Press Your Luck. I was like, of course I want to be on it. I love game shows. So I was really excited to take part. And my competitors were Jay from the Game Chasers and Pixel Dan. And I ended up winning the game, which I was super excited about. It's like making my game show dreams come true. So that was really fun. I'd love to take part in that again. And then at the end of the after party, I was just sort of hanging around with Will and some other friends there. And two of the cosplay guests, uh, Calcium Chloride and Lovely X Riot, they came up to me and they're like, oh, you're a guest too. Come on, dance with us, which was really exciting. I always like making new friends. So that was fun. I got a picture with Lovely X Riot, who was dressed as Morrigan on the Sunday with, from Dragon Age, which I loved. So yeah, that was my time at Retro World Expo. It was a lot of fun. Um, if anyone watching is someone who I met there, um, it was very nice to meet you. I hope to see you next year. And uh, yeah, we'll go on to pickups now. So I have a ton 
of pickups from September. Um, there were two events, Retro World Expo where I got a bunch of stuff and then Barry Game Exchange, which is a semi-annual or biannual twice a year event uh, just sort of outside of the GTA which I always go to but before those there were two things I got sort of elsewhere um, during the month. The first is Tempest 4000 on Xbox One. This is one that Will kept told me I should play. It's sort of based on an arcade game. I think it's like a sort of musical shoot 'em up but as you may be able to tell I haven't actually unwrapped it yet. Um, I've been playing a lot of other things, but I will get to this one soon. And the other one for PS2 is Jaws Unleashed, which sounds really cool because rather than have to hunt Jaws or escape from Jaws, like so many of the games based on this property, you actually get to play Jaws in this and eat people and boats and other animals and things. So in terms of what I got at Barry Game Exchange, there was a number of things. First is Dynamite Heady for the Sega Genesis. Is this glaring? Um, yeah, I saw, um, where was it? SNES Drunk reviewed this fairly recently and it looked really fun. It's a game by Treasure who makes excellent games. And since I've been playing a little bit more Genesis lately, I decided that I wanted to play this and I will probably review this one sometime as well. I also got Load Runner on PS1. I believe Load Runner was originally on Atari, and then I think the computers of that time, like the Apple II and the Vic 20 and the Commodore 64. Um, but it's very sort of arcadey game, a lot of levels. I've never played it before, but uh, it seems like something that's sort of up my alley. I also got Castle Shikigami 2, which is a shoot 'em up on PS2. I don't tend to see that many shoot 'em ups on PS2, although that's gonna change later in this video. Um, and then the other thing I got was Grim Grimoire, and I don't know, I think this is the fire emblem that's still in my head. This is a RPG that takes place in a school, so it's, I don't know, almost reminds me a little bit of Harry Potter or something like that. And I think Time Loops, which is very common and popular in games right now, um, time loops, but yeah, this, so time loops and you have to sort of figure out what to do in order to solve the ultimate puzzle in order to beat the game, and yeah, I just, I had never seen this before, and you know, it was just one of those times where it's like, oh, well, this looks interesting and I'm unfamiliar with it, so I wanted to try it out. One of my friends from the Cartridge Club, Joe, who has a channel called My Life in Collecting, gave me this strategy guide for free. It's Star Ocean Till the End of Time, which is a game that I have. I'm not a super big fan of this one, as you know. I love the, um, I love the sort of Star Ocean 2 the best, but I do collect strategy guides for games that I've played, and yeah, he said, take this or else I will throw it away. So now it's part of my collection. There was also a guy there who had a lot of sort of books and kind of collectibles and things as opposed to games who was selling things off really cheap. Uh, he was just basically saying, make me an offer and I'll accept it, which honestly I find very uncomfortable. I'm not good with dealing with money, offering people, asking for discounts. I just like, I like to see a sticker price and then decide if I want to pay that and then give the money or walk away. But um, this did end up getting me some really nice things for not much money. So the first thing is the Doom Collector's Edition Strategy Guide. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of the new Doom game, so I'm very excited to have this. It is like a strategy guide that goes over the game. Um, strategy guide for Doom doesn't seem all that necessary, although there are collectibles and things to do, but it's got some nice art and things in it. So some maps as well. So happy to have this on the shelf. And then the next one, I'm even more excited about, and this is the Alan Wake Official Survival Bundle, and it comes with two books. Oh my goodness, there's so much stuff around me. <laughs> uh, so this is the actual strategy guide here. It just goes over uh, the game. It's quite dense, like there's a lot of information and a lot of sort of text walkthrough in here. And then the other thing that I really like is called Alan Wake Illuminated, and it is more of a um, 
story about the development of the game, the characters in the game. There's a lot more sort of art and things in this book, so I'm going to be paging through this one soon too. The same table also had Kingdom Newlands. I think this is from Limited Run Games and it was sort of a special edition of it. Uh, now this is the PlayStation 4 version and I play it on Xbox. Uh, Kingdom Newlands and Kingdom Two Crowns managed to become some of my most played games last year or this year. Whenever. Um, but I really loved them. They have beautiful pixel art style, um, a great soundtrack, and just the perfect blend of like survival and resource management with a very simple UI. And it was just fantastic. I really loved these games. So he actually, the guy who sold this to me, he just wanted the game disc. So I have the PS4 cover, although he did not include the game with it, which again is fine since I play things on Xbox, not PlayStation. I just wanted the stuff that came with it. So it also came with a cute little pin of the crown that you have to keep lest you lose the game, as well as the soundtrack from Kingdom New Lands. And then it came with a couple just little uh, pieces of art. I can get them out here. Uh, yeah, I can see here. We've got the greed trying to take the, the uh, queen's crown here. And then this one, again, a cute little sort of cartoon version of it. So yeah, really excited to get this. I actually didn't even know that this existed until I saw it on the table. Okay, we are not even halfway done with the pickups. Oh, something else I forgot from Barry. I got some t-shirts, one of which is this Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles t-shirt. Uh, now onto what I got at Retro World Expo. Uh, Game Dave was selling his shirts for his Family Corner series on his channel, so I picked up one of these. I really like the red and gold. It's very Lannister-like. Uh, wear that in a future video. Um, there wasn't much in terms of PC Big Box. I was kind of disappointed. There was one vendor who had a number of PC Big Box, but almost nothing that I was interested in, nothing that I had played before. Uh, so all that I did find there was the CD for Vampire the Masquerade Redemption. Um, if you remember at an earlier convention, I think at Too Many Games, I had found just the empty box for Redemption. So I'm just trying to fill it with the CDs and the manuals um, and stuff. So this is part of filling that up. I had been hanging on to one of my most rare games for like 15 years. Uh, it was called Urban Yeti for the Game Boy Advance. The producer of the game, who I worked with briefly, uh, gave me a copy of it and I hung on to it just because it was kind of unique and rare and a very strange game, despite the fact that I've never even played on a Game Boy Advance. I really have no desire to play on a Game Boy Advance since I don't like handhelds. So I finally decided I was going to sell it or trade it in, uh, so I sold it to someone at Retro World Expo, and with the money I got from that, I got some other um, equally weird things. Uh, the big one is Psychic Detective on PS1. This is an FMV game where you play a detective who can go into people's minds. And this has been on my list for a while. There was a local store that had a copy of it for a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, I found it for a much more reasonable price at the expo. And then the other one I got, which is also a PS1 long box, is Discworld, which is a point and click adventure game and it's supposed to be very funny. So I'm excited to have these and include them in the PS1 collection. And in my continuing quest for sort of obscure games, I also found River King, A Wonderful Journey, which is a fishing game. You do fishing and you do cooking contests. Um, it's made from the people who made, oh no, just the people who published Harvest Moon. But uh, yeah, it looks super cute and I like fishing in games, so I thought I'd try that one out. Um, another thing I got was Wrecking Crew. I just played this for the first time on the Switch, on the sort of NES games that are available 
with Switch Online, and I really liked it. It's just sort of like a puzzle game where you have to avoid bad things coming after you while destroying obstacles in your path. The layout is almost Donkey Kong-like, uh, but yeah, it's more of a puzzler than anything, so I decided I wanted to pick up a real copy. Now I talked about shooters on the PS2. There was an auction, uh, actually there was an auction on Saturday and Sunday that Will was a part of, and he picked up this bundle of games for a very cheap price, like well under what it was worth. I think it was $20 US, um, and it included Gradius V, Sylphide, The Lost Planet, Wipeout Fusion, and R-Type Final. Um, most of these, other than Wipeout, are shoot 'em ups. So there are actually more shoot 'em ups on the PS2. And Will doesn't really collect for PS2, so he can consider these stolen. I also got a present from a viewer. It is Super Talking Jeopardy. Oh, Talking Super Jeopardy, got that messed up. Uh, so first of all, thank you very much for this nice gift. I love game shows, as I mentioned. I used to play a Jeopardy game on PC with my mom and my stepdad. Um, I've never played this Nintendo version, but I'm looking forward to trying it out. Also added some more to the Sega CD collection. When we were at Too Many Games, uh, one of my friends, Musty Hobbit from the Cartridge Club, had picked up this, Kids on Sight, which is a construction game where kids do construction. And it just looked very ridiculous, so Will managed to procure me a copy of this from one of his friends, I think, who brought me this um, at the show. We also found someone who makes repros, I guess, fakes of Sega CD games. So we picked up some of the things that are prohibitively expensive for the real thing. So the one that I wanted was Snatcher. So now I have my own fake copy of Snatcher to play if I want to play it again. Uh, and then Will also got Popful Mail and KO Flying Squadron. Uh, KO is one I've reviewed on the channel before. Popful Mail is one I was planning on reviewing, but then I kind of got stuck. This artwork on this is kind of porny. Like, what is what is going on here with these like hamsters? I don't I don't even know. The game isn't porny, but uh, this <laughs> this cover is. But yeah, I'm I'm excited to have these. I don't really um, care if they're fake. If it saves me eight hundred dollars, I would uh, you know have this one on. I think these cost fifteen dollars each, which was pretty good deal. And then on the Sega CD topic, I also got this book, which is Sega CD Game Secrets. Um, just sort of a little kind of novelty item that goes over some secrets for different games. It's got like Batman Returns, Double Switch, Sonic CD, Secret of Monkey Island, Lethal Enforcers, Jurassic Park. So maybe it will help me out when I eventually do my Jurassic Park playthrough and review. Oh my god, there's just so much stuff. Okay, we're almost done though. This is something I ordered online a while ago. Um, I just had it shipped to a friend in the States to save on shipping. And it is the Vampire Masquerade Bloodlines pre-order item, which is a t-shirt. I believe, yes, this is from Best Buy. If you pre-ordered the game, you got this t-shirt, which comes in what looks like a game box. But um, I'm going to open it now. Um, I did not bring any knife or anything, so I'll just have to use my teeth. There we go. The box is stuffed very full. Oh, of course there's tape on it as well. I really should have brought a knife before I started filming this. Oh, it's coming off okay. There we go. Now this is likely going to be like a 3XL or something. And I won't be able to wear it. Um, oh, it's an XL. Uh, here's the t-shirt. What is it? Um, who is this? Oh, this is the Kuei Jin woman, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so this is the t-shirt. It's kind of cool, way too big. It'll definitely just be for um, sleeping in, I guess. But yeah, I'm happy to have this part of the Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines release. It's a game that I didn't get right on release. I got it a little bit after it released, so I didn't even know that there was this pre-order t-shirt, but happy to have it in the collection since, I, since I'm such a big fan of the game. Finally,
finally we're down to the last thing although the convention was kind of disappointing for PC Big Box uh, we stopped on the way home at a store in Belleville, Ontario, because we hadn't had enough game shopping over the weekend. We had to stop somewhere else. But luckily that we did, because I found a really good steal on a game that was on my list. It's Gabriel Knight 3, Blood of the Sacred, Blood of the Damned. Um, I'm very happy to have this. This is an interesting game. This is after Gabriel Knight went 3D. It's such an interesting series because the first one is just point and click adventure just with pixel graphics. The second one is FMV and the third one went into uh, 3D. It honestly, the graphics don't hold up very well. The characters and things are quite ugly, but it's a good game. It's a bit of an enigma because there's some puzzles like the cat hair mustache, which are truly abysmal, but there's also a lot of puzzles that are really clever and really interesting. So uh, yeah, it's a bit all over the place in terms of quality, but I do, I did remember really liking this game. The story would be familiar to you if you've read, um, what's that Dan Brown book that everyone was reading like 20 years ago? The Da Vinci Code. Yeah, the story is very much like that. Of course, The Da Vinci Code wasn't a an original story either. That was very, very much based on um, sort of verging on infringement of a book called Holy Blood, Holy Grail about um, having the Holy Grail sort of not be what was expected and be found somewhere. So it comes with the game discs. It also still has the registration cards and everything. The game manual and then the prologue. Oh yeah, that reminds me. This was also a weird thing about the game was that the prologue is in this comic. Uh, it's not in the game. So I remember when I first turned it on, it just sort of gets right into it and it makes reference to things that like, am I supposed to know that? Um, and then later I realized it's because the prologue is in this comic book. And if you don't read it, you might be a little lost as to what's going on um, at the start and why Gabriel and Grace are even where they are. But uh, yeah, that's it for my pickups. There was an excessive amount of them. I'm not even going to include my birthday presents from yesterday since technically that was October. And hopefully October will be a much, much slower month. So I'll need something to talk about next month. But uh, yeah, I guess on to what I've been playing. So I played a few games in September, some of which I really got into, some of which not so much. Last month I talked about how I subscribed for WoW Classic. Uh, Will and I were playing this together and it was sort of an interesting experience. It's been a number of years since I played World of Warcraft. I sort of never wanted to play again, but I was convinced to subscribe for Classic to see that sort of classic experience. And there was a part of me that wanted to see the raids especially because when I started playing WoW I did start in that first um the initial release but it wasn't until near the end of it like I started playing just as the next Ramus patch was coming out which was right near the end so I didn't get too much into raiding I did like a little Molten Core a little Zul Gurub? There's so many Zul raids. I think Zul Gurub, um, with Hakar. And so I didn't get to see a whole lot of like BW or L or AQ or any of that. So there was part of me that's like, oh, I'd really like to go experience those raids sort of for the first time. And it might have worked, except leveling is just such a slog. Um, it's not as challenging as I originally expected. There are a lot of quests with elites that you just can't take on yourself. Um, even sometimes with two people, it was too difficult. But the leveling experience was okay until we got out of the safe zones. Unfortunately, we rolled on a PvP server, although almost all the servers seem to be PvP. And PvP sucks. Um, I hate getting ganked by level 60s who just like think they're hot shit because they're 
killing some level 30 character. It's just really a pain in the ass and makes me want to commit a whole lot of murder. And it's just not worth it. Like, the the frustration of that, the rewards you're getting for the gameplay, um, the fun is, I don't know, nothing seemed that exciting. Like, even dungeons, which I thought was what I would really like, they all were kind of boring, um, sort of easier than I expected them to be. So, WoW was an interesting experiment. If they ever released a Burning Crusade again, that was sort of like my WoW prime time that I miss. But yeah, WoW Classic in some ways wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Originally, when people wanted it, I was like, you don't know what you're asking for. This isn't going to be fun. Uh, but it was a little more social than WoW eventually became to be. Uh, it just... Yeah, I think I'm just past that part in my life. Even when I was having a good time with it, it was just such a time sink and everything took so long. There's so few flight paths. Uh, your skills cost so much money. I was getting up to level 40 where I'd be able to learn how to um, ride a mount and the training and the mount were so expensive. I was never going to have enough gold for that. So it was just, yeah, I think it's just, I'm, I'm past it. There's so many other games I want to play and I don't want to dedicate that much time to World of Warcraft. Last month I also talked a bit about Slay the Spire and talked about how it didn't catch me at all. I did end up going back to try to give it another shot. I still has some of my complaints still stand about the aesthetic of it and the sort of quietness of it. I did find a character that I really liked. Uh, there's three characters, although they might have added a fourth recently, and the one I liked was called the Defects, and he had all of these orbs that he could summon, and they had different effects and things. It was very sort of mathy in terms of what, how much defense you had, how much attack you could be doing on each turn, so I really liked that part of it, and I liked that character. I ended up playing Playing it until I finally got to the end of the dungeon with that character and it was a lot of fun. I almost wanted to go back and play through with the other two characters because apparently if you get to the end with all three more of the game opens up to you, but the default character, which is just sort of like a sword and board warrior guy, is just so boring. I couldn't, I couldn't make myself play it more than a couple times. I just didn't find that play style appealing at all. So yeah, it's still a strange one where I feel like it did get more fun, but it still just seemed developed in a way to make it addicting to be like oh just one more turn like oh you had a you had a bad sort of roll of the dice you don't roll any dice there but um you know just try it again maybe you'll get better cards maybe you'll get better items but yeah it had that very like obsessive kind of gameplay that makes you just want to keep playing so I don't particularly like that although I did quite like that one character and playing through the game with it. So another game I got really into this month was Control, which is the latest game by Remedy, who made Alan Wake, which I'm a huge fan of. And this game was just perfectly odd. Um, if you're a fan of sort of like the X-Files or Twin Peaks, just sort of bizarre kind of supernatural things, this is a fantastic game. You play a character called Jesse who goes to the Board of Control, which is in a house called the Oldest House, which is apparently smack dab in New York City, but you can only see it if you know and are looking for it, which is really interesting. And it's got this great gameplay where to some extent it's just a third person sort of over the shoulder shooter, but you get all these supernatural abilities. You can fly, you can pick up items sort of telepathically and shoot them at your enemies. Uh, but the location is really the biggest draw of it. The building just has this great brutalist architecture and it's sort of been taken over by this um, nefarious kind of presence and as you clean it out the building moves and shifts and things open up and it's just really well done. There's some excellent set pieces that sort of do that where like the rooms are changing, the walls are receding and new doors are opening and like there's all these different levels and it's just visually very, very cool. Uh, one of the best pieces also combines it with music, which is something that Alan Wake did to great effect, having those sort of musical set pieces. It was just really excellent and there's just so many 
very weird little things. There's these objects of power in the game, and they are sort of like maybe from another dimension. They're just these objects like a fridge where you have to look at it to keep it still, otherwise it might hurt you or the people around you. Like weird, cool things like that. And yeah, it was a great game. Occasionally the combat got a little bit annoying. Um, there were some boss fights specifically that seemed more difficult and more frustrating than they had to be. But when the game was sort of moving at a good clip, you were hitting the interesting side quests or the main quests and like seeing all these objects of power and clearing them out and just seeing this wonderful location sort of merge and shift and meld around you. It was really a really fun time. Another game I absolutely loved last month was Dead Cells. Uh, when Dead Cells first came out, I didn't think it would be the kind of game for me. Um, it's described as a roguelike, which sometimes turns me off. You have to keep going through a procedurally generated dungeon in order to reach the end of it. Um, you know, you can only go so far, but as you go, you can collect these cells and power yourself up, get new abilities, things like that. Uh, but it came on Xbox Game Pass, so that's why I tried it out, and I just loved it. Uh, the pixel art is beautiful, the gameplay is fast and fluid, there's all kinds of different weapons and abilities, so you can really customize your gameplay to do what you want. Um, if you're more of a defensive player, you can use a shield, that's not me. You can use like melee attacks, so you can be right up in there with things. You can trap things or use turrets, uh, throw flames on the ground if you want want to sort of stay safe and at a distance, which is my personal play style when I played that. It was really fantastic. I just, once I started it, I just loved it so much. I basically just kept playing until I reached the end of the game. And even when you reach the end of the game, there's still a lot left to do. You can increase the difficulty, you can go looking for other bosses and things. That's not generally what I do once I sort of feel like I've beat a game, I generally move on to something else, but it was just a ton of fun, really beautiful, really great gameplay, and I was happy with how it went when I actually beat it because I had gotten to a part and every time I was getting there I was just dying. Just I think I got there six times, it was like a 20 or 30 minute run to get there, and I kept dying and I was getting really frustrated and sort of feeling like I wasn't going to be able to do it, but then I just had this excellent run one time and I just got through that area and through four other areas that were brand new to me, made it all the way to the final boss and beat him on my first try and it just like felt amazing. I felt like, oh man, maybe I am good at video games, but yes, Dead Cells, even if you think maybe it's not the kind of game for you, uh, try it out, especially if it's free on Game Pass. So yeah, Dead Cells was really excellent. All right, so after all of that, that is my update for September. Please let me know in the comments if there's anything interesting that you played or picked up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.